What if I told you that a single day changed the course of history forever? That's right. One significant day, a 24-hour cycle of the Earth, was the catalyst for a seismic shift in the trajectory of the Second World War. Picture a world embroiled in a conflict of unprecedented scale, a world where nations were pitted against each other, their futures hanging in the balance. This was the world of the early 1940s, a world at war. The significance of D-Day in this global conflict cannot be overstated. It was the day that marked the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany, the day that lit the beacon of hope for millions. This was the day that the Allied forces, in an operation of exceptional courage and strategic brilliance, breached the formidable fortifications of Hitler's Fortress Europe. Operation Overlord, as it was codenamed, was the largest seaborne invasion in history. It was a daring and audacious plan, one that required intricate coordination between land, sea and air forces, and one that was fraught with immense risk. But the stakes were high, and the need for action imperative. The successful execution of Operation Overlord signaled to the world that the tide was turning. The Nazi stronghold was beginning to crumble under the weight of the United Allied Forces. It set the stage for a series of victories that would eventually lead to the liberation of Europe from Nazi control. But more than that, D-Day was a testament to the indomitable human spirit, to the courage and resilience of those who fought against tyranny and oppression. It was a day that demonstrated the power of unity, of collective action, and of shared purpose. In the grand scheme of World War II, D-Day was a pivotal moment, a turning point that changed the course of history. It was the day when the balance of power shifted, when the scales tipped in favor of freedom, and when the first rays of hope pierced through the dark clouds of war. That day was June 6, 1944, known forever as D-Day. But how did we get to this pivotal moment in history? Let's turn the clock back to the planning stages of Operation Overlord. It was a massive undertaking, involving the coordination of hundreds of thousands of troops from various nations, and it was shrouded in utmost secrecy. The Allies knew they needed to reclaim France from German control, but the where and when of the operation were critical for its success. After much deliberation, they zeroed in on Normandy, a coastal region in northwestern France. It had the advantage of being less fortified than the other potential sites and it offered a direct route to the heart of Germany. But the Allies didn't stop at just selecting the ideal location. They also crafted a series of intricate deception tactics to throw the Germans off their trail. Codenamed Operation Bodyguard, this strategy was designed to convince the Germans that the invasion would take place elsewhere, particularly at Pas de Calais, the narrowest point between Britain and France. Artificial radio traffic, decoy equipment, and even a phantom army, led by none other than the charismatic General George Patton, were all part of this grand charade. These ploys were so effective that even when D-Day was underway, the German High Command believed it was a diversionary tactic, and the real invasion was yet to come. Preparations were not just military, they were also about rallying morale. General Dwight D. Eisenhower, the supreme commander of the Allied forces, had a colossal task at hand. He had to ensure that the troops were mentally prepared to undertake this enormous and risky operation. His words of encouragement, emphasizing the significance of their mission, played a crucial role in stealing the resolve of the soldiers. With meticulous planning, strategic deception, and a united front, the Allies were ready to embark on this daring mission. Normandy was chosen, the troops were primed, and the Germans were, they hoped, sufficiently misled. With everything in place, the stage was set for the largest seaborne invasion in history. As dawn broke on June 6, 1944, the world held its breath. The invasion of Normandy, the largest amphibious assault in history, was about to begin. Operation Overlord had been meticulously planned, and now it was time for execution. In the early morning hours, the skies above Normandy were filled with the roar of engines. Thousands of paratroopers from the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions of the United States, along with the British 6th Airborne Division, were dropped behind enemy lines. Their mission was to secure key bridges, disrupt enemy communications, and sow confusion among the German ranks. It was a daring and dangerous task, and these brave men faced heavy resistance, unexpected challenges, and the unknown. Meanwhile, out at sea, a massive naval bombardment was underway. The Allied fleet, one of the largest ever assembled, unleashed a barrage of shells on the German defenses along the coast. This was not just a show of force, it was a crucial element of the invasion plan, 
designed to weaken the enemy's defenses and pave the way for the impending landings. As the morning wore on, the first wave of troops hit the beaches. At Omaha, Utah, Gold, Juno, and Sword, men from the United States, United Kingdom, and Canada faced a maelstrom of bullets, shells, and mines. The resistance was fierce, the conditions challenging. The beaches, once serene stretches of sand, were transformed into chaotic, smoke-filled battlegrounds. But despite the intense gunfire and seemingly insurmountable obstacles, the troops pressed on, driven by a determination to liberate Europe. The invasion was not without its cost. Many brave soldiers fell that day, their sacrifice a testament to the enormity of the task at hand. Yet, despite the losses, the Allies made significant progress. They breached the Atlantic Wall, Hitler's formidable coastal defense system, and began to push inland. By the end of the day, the Allies had secured a foothold on the Normandy coast. The invasion of Normandy had begun, marking a key turning point in the Second World War. But the battle was far from over, and the path to victory would be long and hard fought. The success of D-Day was just the beginning. With the beachheads secured, the aftermath of the invasion unfolded like a dramatic play, ripe with sacrifice, courage, and strategic maneuvering. The Battle of Normandy, a critical chapter in this tale, ensued in the weeks following the initial landing. As the Allies advanced inland, they faced fierce resistance from the German forces. Towns and villages transformed into battlegrounds as both sides grappled for control. The hedgerows of Normandy, initially seen as mere geographical features, soon became formidable obstacles, providing the German forces with a natural defense system. The Battle of Normandy was not without its toll. The cost was high, thousands of lives were lost, with many more wounded or missing. Yet, the courage of those who fought was unwavering. Each soldier, each unit, understood the gravity of their mission. Their sacrifices were not in vain, for their actions were beginning to turn the tide of the war. In the face of these obstacles, the Allied forces persevered. By late July, they had broken through the German lines at saint Lo, launching Operation Cobra. This was a decisive moment, allowing the Allies to push towards Paris. The German forces worn down and stretched thin were unable to halt this advance. By August, just two months after the initial landing, the Allies had liberated Paris. The City of Light, which had been under German occupation for over four years, was free once more. This was a significant victory, providing a much-needed morale boost to the Allied forces and the occupied nations. Yet, the liberation of Paris was not the end, it was another beginning, the start of a long and arduous journey towards the liberation of Europe. The Allied forces, buoyed by their successes, continued their push eastward, marching towards the heart of Nazi Germany. The aftermath of D-Day was a testament to the indomitable spirit of the Allied forces. Despite the challenges and the sacrifices, they pushed forward, driven by a singular goal, the liberation of Europe. And so, with the fall of Paris and the continued advance of the Allies, the liberation of Europe had begun. D-Day was more than just a military operation. It was the glimmer of hope that pierced through the clouded skies of World War II, a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity. As the largest seaborne invasion in history, it marked the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany, and initiated a domino effect that led to the liberation of Europe. Imagine for a moment, the morale of the Allied forces, having just pulled off one of the most audacious and successful military operations. Their spirits soared, their resolve stiffened. The psychological boost provided by the success of D-Day cannot be overstated. It was akin to a shot of adrenaline that invigorated the Allied forces, reinforcing their belief in the cause and their ability to emerge victorious. But D-Day was more than a morale booster. It was a strategic masterstroke that tilted the scales of the war firmly in favor of the Allies. By securing a foothold in Normandy, the Allies opened up a second front in Europe, stretching the already strained resources of the Nazi war machine. The German forces, caught between the hammer of the Western Allies and the anvil of the Soviet Union, began to crumble. The invasion also signaled to the world that the tide of the war was turning. It was a clear demonstration of the Allies' commitment to ending the Nazi regime and a warning to those who still supported Hitler's cause. The message was clear, the Allies were on the offensive, and they were not stopping until they achieved their objective. In the grand scheme of World War II, D-Day was a turning point, a fulcrum upon which the fate of the world tilted towards freedom. It was a day of triumph, of courage, and of hope. 
It was a day when humanity stood up against the forces of darkness and said, no more. D-Day was the day the world began to breathe again. It was the day when the grip of Nazi tyranny began to loosen and the long road to liberation and peace commenced. It was the day when the world dared to dream of a future free from the horrors of war. D-Day was not just a date on a calendar, it was the moment when the course of history was irrevocably changed. The echoes of D-Day still resound today. As we reflect on the legacy of D-Day, we find its imprints deeply etched not only in the annals of military history, but also in the fabric of popular culture. The daring assault on Normandy's fortified beaches, an operation of such magnitude and complexity, transformed military strategy forever. It set a precedent for large-scale amphibious invasions, demonstrating the power of coordinated air, sea, and land forces working in unison. Beyond the battlefield, the narratives of courage, sacrifice, and camaraderie that unfolded on D-Day have profoundly shaped our cultural perspective of World War II. Their recounts have filled the pages of history books, inspired countless films, novels, and works of art, and have become the subject of poignant commemorations around the globe. Yet, perhaps the most enduring legacy of D-Day lies in the heart-stirring stories of individual bravery and collective sacrifice. The men who stormed the beaches of Normandy, those who parachuted behind enemy lines and the countless others who played their part in this momentous operation. They remind us of the extraordinary lengths to which ordinary people will go in the name of freedom. The legacy of D-Day also serves as a solemn reminder of the cost of this freedom. The thousands of crosses and stars of David at the Normandy American Cemetery stand as silent testament to the lives lost on that fateful day. Each one represents a story cut short, a sacrifice made, a debt we can never fully repay. As we delve into the legacy of D-Day, we are reminded of the importance of remembering and honoring these sacrifices. It's a legacy that urges us to strive for peace, to value our freedoms, and to never forget the price at which they were won. In the words of General Eisenhower, the eyes of the world are upon you. As we reflect on D-Day and its legacy, let us remember his words. For the echoes of D-Day still resound today, carrying with them the weight of history and the hopes of generations. So, what have we learned from this exploration of D-Day? We've journeyed through the meticulous planning that went into Operation Overlord, an undertaking so vast and complex it required the coordination of millions of soldiers, thousands of ships, and countless resources. The execution of this operation wasn't just a military feat, it was a marvel of logistics, strategy, and human will. We've seen how the Allies landed on the beaches of Normandy on June 6, 1944, a day now seared into our collective memory as D-Day. Under the relentless fire and against all odds, they pressed forward their courage and determination a testament to the human spirit. We've delved into the aftermath of the invasion, the heavy toll it exacted in human lives, the profound impact it had on the course of the war. D-Day marked a turning point in World War II, a shift in momentum that began to tilt the scales in favor of the Allies. We've reflected on the enduring legacy of D-Day, how it stands as a symbol of unity and cooperation among nations, a demonstration of what can be achieved when we stand together against a common foe. It's a reminder of the sacrifices made by those who fought and those who fell for the cause of freedom. And finally, we've considered the broader implications of D-Day how it spurred the liberation of Europe from the grip of Nazi Germany, setting the stage for the end of World War II. It's a pivotal moment in history, one that reshaped the world and continues to influence our present. In essence, D-Day is more than just a date or a military operation. It's a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, the power of unity, and the relentless pursuit of freedom. It's a story of courage, sacrifice, and determination that continues to inspire us, reminding us of what we can accomplish when we stand together. D-Day, a day that forever changed the course of history,